Brittany Branch from Mount Airy City Schools. What were your fears prior to returning to face-to-face -to -face learning? Prior to returning to face-to-face -to -face learning, I admit I was extremely nervous. I was concerned about carrying illness home to my parents who are helping care for my children while I'm at work so that we can avoid sending them to daycare where safety practices surrounding COVID don't seem quite as strict as they are in K-12. I was also concerned about carrying illness home to my husband who has severe asthma and I was concerned for my own health and the health, health of my children. I feared that some students and staff would not follow safety precautions as strictly as I would prefer, and I was worried we wouldn't be able to stay in school very long. How were you able to overcome these fears? I would not say that I overcame any of these fears on my own, but rather I saw quickly how serious my colleagues and the students took these precautions. It is truly thanks to these measures that we have remained in school for over 12 weeks now. Students K-12 are wearing their masks as our staff and practicing social distancing. And as a result, we've not had any spread within our schools. While I still have fears for the health and safety of my family, I definitely feel more confident about the ability to hold face-to-face -face school while also staying safe, as long as everyone continues to practice social distancing and wear their masks. The students and staff in our school district really have risen to the challenge and made our schools a safe place to be. Are there any tips and tricks that you have learned from other teachers? For a teacher who is not back in a face-to-face -face learning environment, what advice would you give them? With regards to safety and sanitation, some of these practices are really just habits that the staff and students had to form and get used to. But we practiced, we reminded, and we formed those habits very quickly at the start of the school year. Having the supplies necessary to wipe down devices, computers, counters, seats, door handles, all right in the classroom and wiping down at transition time seems to be a very effective part of our routine. Hand sanitizer on the way in and out of the classroom every day is also a good habit to form. Using strategies like putting your hands out to make sure that you are far enough away from other people that you cannot touch them and having markers on the floor for where to stand is really helpful for students. Students are bringing towels in their backpacks so that they can sit outside on nice days for their sustained silent reading time. This allows them to spread out, take their masks off, and enjoy some fresh air while reading a book. Students are also using lanyards to keep their masks from falling off or getting lost. With regards to teaching and learning, get creative. Find ways for students to collaborate from a distance. Utilize the same technology tools you used for remote learning in the face-to-face -face environment. Let students do things with paper and pencil and use their hands, but allow them to turn it in virtually by taking a picture or a video in order to avoid collecting papers that have been touched more than is necessary. Take time for social and emotional learning. This is so important. Our students have been through a lot and it will take patience and time to support them through the trauma of this pandemic.